Welcome to American Pancake Vloggy Thingy number two. Famed audio engineer, singer songwriter, uh, guitarist Steve Albini. Um, and as an audio engineer, he's produced or engineered the likes of you know, Nirvana, uh, Pixies, Breeders, Cheap Trick, PJ Harvey, and many more um, music luminaries. Um, he's been very opinionated as of late on the subject of music and how music is going to be uh, disseminated. And even lately he's been speaking about how um, streaming music and different platforms and self-publishing is making record labels irrelevant. But he's even gone a step further um, at the Barcelona Primavera Pro Conference as reported by Billboard. Albini talked about um, cons the concept of copyright or, or copyright copywritten music being irrelevant now. He says, I think we're seeing that the intellectual construct of copyright and intellectual property ownership is not realistic. Ideas once expressed become part of the common mentality, and music once expressed becomes part of the common environment. I think that the idea of intellectual property will naturally have to be modified to accommodate the way that people naturally exchange ideas, music, and information. That old copyright model of the person who wrote something down and owns it and anyone else who wants to use it or see it has to pay him, I think that model has expired. I'm not going to read the whole, the whole thing, the whole passage as reported in Billboard magazine, but you get the idea. Now, obviously over the years and since the onset of Napster and people, you know, doing what was called piracy at one one time and now seems to be kind of commonplace is people are sharing music files um, services are streaming music and not paying the mus musicians very much um, and so the paradigm shift has started a long time ago and Albini is correct in that but you know now that he's talking about copyright you know people not even having the intellectual legal uh, definition of owning a piece of music, a piece of art that they created, some people think he's stepping over that line. Uh, so today, as published on Stereogum and other sites, Mark Rabu, who is a, a no, no way free jazz, uh, kind of eclectic um, guitarist uh, who does tons of studio work, also into Cuban music. He's worked with Tom Waits, um, Elvis Costello, and, uh, and, and more. Um, he kind of, you know, th this guy just hackles up, and he kind of fought back a little bit and wrote an open, angry letter to Steve Albini. So uh, I'm going to read it right here. In a recent Billboard article, you referred to copyright as an expired concept. You further stated that the intellectual construct of copyright, copyright and intellectual property ownership is not realistic. That old copyright model of the person who wrote something down, owns it, and anyone else who wants to use it or see, see it has to pay him. I think that model has expired. If you truly believe that ideas once expressed become part of the common mentality and music once expressed become part of the common environment, are you willing to sign a Creative Commons license placing your entire catalog in the public domain? Or are you just another lousy hypocrite shilling for Google and other huge tech corporations who have made billions in ad based profits while using our work often without paying us asking our permission as clickbait to increase their advertising rates? Working artists and musicians, at least those of us who can't afford to make another record unless the last one paid its production costs, await your response. Sincerely, Mark Rabu. Albini's construct might be here, and Rabu, the old construct here, 
and there may be some pragmatic middle. Hmm. Now, I'm clearly not a lawyer, but exchanging mixtapes um, back in the 80s, it, was that a form of piracy? Uh, was that illegal? I think technically it probably wasn't because you were you were sharing it between a small group, but it's, it, the, the issue is clouded right there. So fast forward to, you know, net, what Napster came to being in about 1999, fast forward to there, all of a sudden people are streaming to people they don't even know. Um, you're able to go to you're able to go online and just download reams of music and no artists are getting paid. Now there, there's two sides to this equation as far as the musician and the artist is concerned. When we were making mixtapes, I can tell you that my friends would make tapes of artists that I wasn't remotely interested in. Um, I didn't think I'd like their music, I didn't want to shell out the money to buy their music. And some of the artists I really grew to love, and then I would start supporting uh, with my dollars and with my time to go see them and whatnot. And, and life went on, you know, people shared music. It, because it was in such a small scale, um, nobody really cared. Um, when it became this grandiose, you know, monster of, of, of artists putting out music, and music getting stolen um, and everybody being called pirates who did it and the government going after people who did it uh, people started thinking twice now years later after the whole Napster thing we're again to this kind of sh shady gray area where people are streaming people are posting things on SoundCloud and oftentimes posting other people's files. People are putting up um, songs on YouTube that they don't own. People can download those songs on YouTube. So even though we're not being called pirates, a lot of the same things happening that was happening during the Napster days. Um, anytime a medium puts up a roadblock, uh, for example, YouTube, has little you know robots and can that can recognize a song that violates copyright infringement but people will put full albums up they'll slow it down and then YouTube has has now made it to where you can speed it up so people know how to play the album at the correct speed and listen to it and the whole result is twofold people are getting being exposed to a wide array of music, um, artists aren't getting paid as readily. So setting aside all the legal ramifications, just from a practical standpoint, Albini does have a point that the genie's out of the bottle. A musician, an artist right now, at this time, and let's just focus on musicians right now, um, it's hard to control the dissemination of their art or their product if you want to call it that but there is one important thing that they can control and maybe the only thing they can control and that is the love and respect that their audience has for them so my advice to any musician right now is nurture that as much as you can because when you produce your merchandise um, and you put your product out there um, if you have a fan base of a thousand people on Facebook or whatever, whatever, however you're, you're, you're marketing to your audience or you're sharing your art with your audience, either way you want to look at it. If you nurture that um, through, through live shows, through the way you communicate with your audience and the people that, you know, the people that come and see you, the people that care about what you make and you're sincere and earnest about that relationship, that's the only thing that Fostering that relationship is what is going to, in the end, nullify anything that the lawyers or, you know, the marketers or the, the copyright laws um, are going to hold on, onto your art. Because the audience that respects and loves you are the ones that are going to want to support you 
and, and keep you going by financially, you know, supporting you and buying your merchandise, buying your product, buying your art. Um, another interesting thing to me, going full circle as we were making mixed cassettes and sharing cassettes way back when, is as most of you know, you know, the, the renaissance, the resurgence of vinyl and cassettes as a medium is really also nullifying the, the piracy and the, um, the, the free file swapping because if you make a product in vinyl that is attractive and it, you, know, you put your heart and soul into it, you make it look attractive, it, it itself becomes an art piece. It itself becomes something that is a connection between yourself, um, you as an artist, and your audience or the people who, who love to support you. As you can see of the vinyl behind me, I'm a big fan of that. And it's kind of interesting that people are even using cassettes again um, because it's just something tactile. It's something that you can have. And again, somebody online cannot steal this stuff, cannot give it away to millions of people, you know. And so, aside from all the legal parameters, the ph philosophical debates that go on between a Steve Albini and a Mark Rabu and everybody else um, on what is deserved, what is owned, you know, you own, you control that relationship with your audience. And it's an awesome thing to control and to respect because when you go out and play live um, and you feel that energy it makes it all worth it so an interesting debate I think everything's kinda coming full circle uh, when you think about it uh, in medieval days you know when you had the minstrel and they were performing live and connecting with people it's it's the only way to, to do it, only way to, do, to produce art music is to do it live and to create those connections. The recordings and the albums, um, those are awesome too. But presenting yourself live, presenting your art live is what's going to make people want to have all this stuff. So that was my little commentary on uh, what I read today online. Um, the little angry letters going back and forth so don't be so angry you know find a workaround um, and more than anything be true to yourself be true to the art you're making and be true to your audience out there so this has been the second installment of the American Pancake vloggy thingy and I hope that you enjoyed it I hope that you tell people to come listen, and, um, and we'll see you next time.